this is the spin coder gamma UV for coding our standard UV resists. Uh, I will start by giving you an introduction to, uh, to the machine. This is the control monitor. It's a touch screen and is used to run the machine. Here is the input-output door used for loading and unloading wafers in cassettes. If we look into the machine, we can see input-output stations here with cassettes. And inside, there is the robot in the center here, which does all the handling of the wafers. In the back, there is a wafer centering station. And here, to the right, is the hot plate stack with a vapor prime oven for HMDS priming, four hot plates for soft baking, and at the bottom is a cool plate. And in here is the business area, the spin coder. Before we run our own wafers, we can run a couple of dummy wafers so I start by loading some wafers. I open the door, pick up a cassette. I walk over here and pick up a couple of clean dummy wafers, load them in the cassette. Then I roughly align the flat towards the back and place the cassette on the input station. Then I lock the door and press the door interlock. Now we're ready to load the cassettes in the machine. We press jobs and then load carrier on the appropriate cassette. This causes the machine to scan the cassette. And it takes the wafers. I'll do the same with the output cassette. So I press load carrier again. When the cassette has been loaded, I verify that the correct number of wafers has been detected and that they are placed correctly in the cassette. And now we can select the sequence that we will be running today. So I select sequence. Initially we get all sequences available on the machine but they've been organized so that we have them according to the resist that is used. So line one, which has the MIR resist, is here. Line two, which has the NLOF, is there. And line three, with the AZ5214E, is here. I will be using the MIR resist today. So I select the appropriate recipe, 1.5 micron, and OK. And now, we can press start sequence to start the process.
when the dummy wafers have finished, we can unload the cassette. And notice that the order of the wafers has been reversed in the output cassette. So they are now at the bottom. And we can inspect the dummy to see if the coating was successful. If we are happy, we can continue loading our own substrates. Now I'm loading my wafers for processing. Notice that the input-output stations are not designated for input and output. You can just choose whichever you want. Again, close the door, press the door interlock, and press load carrier to load the cassette. Verify that the position is correct and press load carrier on the output cassette. And while this loading, I can select my sequence. Again, select the MIA sequences. And this time, I want HMDS priming on my wafers. So I select a sequence that has HMDS in it. Press OK. And press Start Sequence to start processing. While the machine is processing, we can follow the uh, wafers around in the machine on the overview page. And should we decide not to process any more wafers out of the ones we've loaded, I can press job and select input stop. This means that the wafers that have already started processing will be finished, but uh, the ones remaining in the input cassette will not. Now my process is done, so I can unlock the door and unload my wafers. But before I leave, I have to run a cleaning, and for that I need a dummy wafer. So I take a dummy wafer in the cassette and load the cassette. Lock the door. For this particular sequence that I'll be running now, the cleaning sequence, I don't need an output carrier. So I will just select the sequence here. It's the first one on the list, it's called Coder Clean. And press Start Sequence. It will now automatically load the cassette first and then run the wafer. So I unload my dummy wafer used for cleaning. The final thing I do before I leave the machine is I stop the equipment used in Lab Manager and fill in the logbook.